Hey, Kenton, you want to know what's better than having one team in the Final Four? What's that? Do them things. You are Locked On Wolfpack, your daily podcast on the NC State Wolfpack, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Wolfpack Nation? It's time to get locked in with Locked On. Thanks for making Locked On Wolfpack your first listen this Sunday evening. This is a live show, free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This live episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. If you're going to Phoenix, create an account and use code Locked On for $20 off of your first purchase. What's everybody up to tonight? Anything going on? Anything at all? Just a, just a run-of-the-mill Saturday evening in Raleigh, North Carolina. The NC State Wolfpack are going to the Final Four. Times two. Two of them things. Both teams are going to the Final Four. As always, I'm Grayson Boone, joined by former Wolfpack defensive tackle Kenton Gibbs. I want to get this disclaimer out of here early. At some point in this episode, I'm going to cry. My tear ducts are the Hoover freaking dam right now. So whenever that happens, bear with me. But right now, it is pure shock. I cannot believe what I just watched. I cannot believe this run. I cannot believe this team. I cannot believe this for the fan base. I cannot believe DJ Burns. I cannot believe any single part of this but at the same time Kenton you said this Friday night I can believe it we can believe it this team always had this capability sometimes you got to go through the mud before you get the sunshine yeah take it away Kenton I I, I'm feeling it already I'm gonna have to lean on you a little bit I'm I'm gonna tell you this right you you look at this moment and you say what does it mean to NC State sports to to have this type of day right but objectively speaking in the last 30 years up before these past two weeks have we had any success that rivals this we had how many trips to the sweet 16 in those years what two three and now we're going well 2015 and, and now we're going to the final four with a team that again one team a women's team was picked for finish eighth in the conference just before the season started. Not only that, coming into the tournament, well, they're good, but Isaiah James is a walking turnover machine. Four turnovers through the entire tournament so far for uh, big Zai, as they call it, four. You look at the men's team and you say, this is a team that was not going to make the tournament. If multiple, watch how crazy this butterfly effect is, right? If McNeely hits that free throw. Oh, man. Or, or, or if MOC misses that shot. Or let's take it back a little further. If they give up against Louisville when they're trailing at halftime. And yet this team, they both of these teams, they just keep coming. They just keep coming. Every, and think about this. We talked about Coach Keats answering his questions, which he continues to answer. Coach Moore answering his questions. You know, Coach Moore, you've got a ceiling at the Elite Eight. You know, we've never seen you make a Final Four. You've been knocking, but we're not sure you can kick that thing down. It's it's so poetic. In a year where nobody expected anything from either of these teams, it could not have been any other year than the one where everybody's like, okay, well, you know, our men's basketball team should be a little better. They did really good in the portal. But our women's team, they couldn't figure it out last year. They don't have a ton of returning leadership. They're not going to figure And boom, final four. Final four for both teams. There is nothing more NC State than this. And like I said, both of our teams are America's teams right now. Enjoy it. Enjoy wearing this white hat. Because if we go, not if, when we go back again, it's not going to be that same white hat. Everybody's not going to be loving on us like we did now. And I'll tell you this much, and I'm going to throw it back to you, Grayson. 
everybody keeps saying, never give up, never gave up. One of the big critiques of Coach Keith, during, even during this run, how will they react when they don't punch a team in the mouth and catch them by surprise? Was this Duke team surprised? Were they punched in the mouth? Did we throw out a, a, a haymaker in the first half that was unlike anything the world had known? No. But this team, they dug out something deep. They went to that mold. They got into where they had to be to say, why not us? Not, oh, well, we can't compete with Flip. We can't compete with Roach. We can't compete with Mitchell. We can't compete with McLean. Why not us? I saw a comment from Jason. He might he might have just solved it for everybody. Why not both? Why not both teams going to the Final Four? We're going to get into this men's game. The women's will get their shine. I guarantee you that. We're going to get into this men's game because it is the most fresh. Yeah. You talked about Duke and all the All-Americans and the five stars and the brotherhood and the culture. It didn't matter. It didn't matter two weeks ago when we saw them in the ACC tournament. It didn't Mm -hmm. matter today. It didn't matter what was thrown in front of this team, and it didn't matter who was throwing it. Yeah. Didn't matter. Did not matter. Kyle Filipowski getting in his feelings didn't matter. Jared McCain heating up from deep didn't matter. Luggish start in the first half for the Wolfpack didn't matter. Looked out of sorts offensively didn't matter. Two early fouls for DJ Burns didn't matter. Nothing could have stopped this team tonight. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing could have stopped this team. This – go ahead. And and I just want to say, I just want to say that in these moments, it's so often we're used to the the old adage of when it's winning time, you need a Reggie Miller that's going to show up and do it all. When it's winning time, you need a LeBron James, you need a Steph Curry to go, this team, even in winning time, unselfish. Even in winning time, even in the middle of everybody cheering like their heads are on fire every time DJ Birds touches the ball. You know what DJ Birds is doing? Looking for the open man or the best shot. Even when DJ Horn gets it rolling after a slow start and he's got the hot head and things are starting to fall for him, you know what DJ Horn is doing? looking for the best shot, looking for the open man. And then the you talk about the 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 most the toughest most underrecognized part of the game. Defense. Jaden Taylor and Casey Morsell. They have had guards, player of the year candidates, conference player of the year guys, all Americans. They have put those boys in Dante's lowest circle of hell. Week after week after week after week. Man, I'll tell you what. And in this game, was it any different? Was it any different? Even the shots that Duke did hit, were they not tough? Was then was were they just hitting shots where it's like, oh man, we got to get somebody over there. We leave them open like that all night. That's gonna kill us. This team is connected, they're talking, they're communicating defensively. The effort is through the roof, and the belief is through the roof. And when you combine those two things in a little old 11 seed from little old Raleigh, North Carolina, you've got yourself a recipe for a final four team. I want to tell you something. We've talked about this team buying in at the right time, a team effort for what is this now? A nine game win streak. Everyone yeah. buying in, settling into their mm-hmm. role believing in each other that nothing can stand in their way. Something that I think it absolutely epitomizes that coming out of this game. Kenton, do you know who our leading rebounder was tonight without looking? I have no clue. Who was it? It was Michael O'Connell. Do you know how many boards he had? 11? 11. Michael O'Connell had 11 boards. Against Duke. Duke is one of the better rebounding teams in the country. We talk about this every time we play Duke, even in the regular season. Every single time, it has to be a team effort crashing the boards. All hands on deck. You have to be physical to control this game from the inside out. Michael O'Connell. Little old Michael O'Connell. 11 boards. 
You can't quantify that it factor, the it factor, the the compassion, the perseverance, the want to. Yeah. I, I We had a tweet the other day. One of these bracketology expert types said, well, Marquette had much higher shot quality. And if they play 10 times and Marquette wins nine times, guess what, buddy? You don't play the game in a spreadsheet. No. You don't play no. the game on a computer generated system. You play the game between the lines. Yeah. Yeah. And, and guess State, what? In yeah. in every single one of these nine game every single game in this nine game winning streak, NC State wanted it more. And you yeah. can't put that in a calculator. You can't quantify the want. The, yeah. the desire, the determination. You never die. You never say never. You never give up. Is this not the epitome of NC State? All of these years, every time I start thinking about Valvano, that's when I, I get going here. <clears throat> they don't die. They, they can't be killed. They can't hey. be killed. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, it's completely natural to feel that way thinking about Coach Bavano because when you talk about this run, and specifically for the men, they have not lost a game since Jim, Jim Valvano's birthday. Since his birthday most recently passed, they have not lost a game. <laughs> I, hey, listen, it, it's, it's completely normal. It's completely it's completely normal to feel that way when you think about the last coach to win the national championship here. And, and again, when you think about Jimmy V and, and what that situation was, and, and you go back to the 30 for 30 dollar, he wasn't the guy that they wanted at first. He wasn't their first choice, but he still showed up, showed out. It got us our last national championship and or one. Yeah. Our last national championship in the big three. That's, that's what this thing is about. Who wanted NC state to turn who wanted to see State in the tournament outside of Raleigh? Who? Nobody. Some some folks in Raleigh didn't want to see NC State in the tournament. And and now all of a sudden we're America's team. We're America's team now. Now all of a sudden everybody in the country love them some DJ Burns. Now all of a sudden everybody is so interested in DJ Horn and the Raleigh Sun returning home. Now all of a sudden everybody's interested. Who's this Michael O'Connell? Where did he come from? Where, where, where's this guy from? Where, who's who's he? Lo and behold, this team, they they keep fighting, they keep battling, and they, again, I know that we've talked about the belief a lot, but, but let me tell you about something that's happening on the court at a higher level than I've seen all year from this team. Again, they got rid of the can't-get-right-itis. They keep stringing it together. Before it was you were going to get one or the other, Good defense or good offense. You know, when you, when your mama was tired and you were like, Ma, can you take me to the mall? And she said, all right, if I take you there, somebody got to bring you back. I, I ain't making the trip both ways. You're going to get one or the other. That's what NC State was giving us all during the season. The men's basketball team was giving us, you can get good offense, you can get good defense. I'm not sure if it's going to be enough to win, but you're going to get one or the other. Now, all of a sudden, they're stringing together both. Back to back to back. All these games. Back to back to back. Great offense, great defense. Love to see it. I'm gonna ha- uh, I'm gonna take a quick second to read an ad here. May I'll I'll break up my uh, break up my feels for a second. You want to talk about ad placement? How about this one? Our first sponsor is Game Time. Game Time is the fastest and easiest. Both of those words matter right now for NC State fans. Way to get tickets to all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you or in Phoenix, Arizona. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes all of the guesswork out of buying tickets. You can see the view from your seat so you know what to expect upon arrival. You can buy tickets in only seconds with a number of taps, and everything is streamlined and as easy as you can possibly find it. Download Game Time today. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time, create an account and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. And again, create an account and use redeem code Locked On College. L O C K E D O N C O L L E G E for twenty dollars off. 
Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, digging into some of the finer details of this game, we talked about a little bit of a slower start in the first half for NC State. They just didn't seem like they had that same it factor. I guess you could say it that way as the previous eight games in this win streak. They felt out of sorts. They felt a bit rushed. I really felt like they were much too soft in the paint. I think our bigs just did not establish themselves where they needed to early on. I think we missed far too many bunnies, settled for far too many shots, you know, early in the shot clock, off balance, just exactly what you don't want to get into a habit of doing against Duke. Duke was hoping that that is exactly what we would look like, and we played into their hands. And I tweeted at halftime, breathe, get tougher, and come out angry. Come out and be assertive. Because other than really DJ Burns and DJ Horn, everyone else, everyone else felt to a certain degree a little bit like, okay, things are not going the way they have been going for us. Is this, is this the end? I even saw folks on Twitter saying, well, it was a good run. And I was like, eh, there's no way you're giving up that easy. Like, come on, come on now. But the team, and then you come back out in that second half and you establish yourself. The exact moment you needed to make a statement. They come out and they do it. They make a little bit of a run. All of a sudden, Duke can't generate anything on the offensive end. Philip Halsey's picking up fouls. You could see the frustration on the faces of Duke. And there was a moment. I'd have to go back and look at it. I don't know when it was time-wise. But there was a moment. I think it was a DJ Horn bucket where you felt it. You felt that momentum immediately flip back to the red and white. And then the belief comes in and you saw it on the faces of the Wolfpack players. You saw the belief on DJ Burns face. Once he gets smiling, once he gets that look, you know what time it is. Once DJ Horn is smiling, you know what time it is. Once Michael O'Connell buries a three, you know what time it is. He only hits big shots. Less important shots, not on the menu for Michael O'Connell. He prefers the big moments. More power to him. Mm -hmm. We had wondered what NC State would look like in this run when they do get behind. The only other time we really saw it was, A, against Louisville, the first game of this run, and B, against Virginia, where we fell down late and clawed back in it. We know how that one ended. We hadn't really experienced the team getting down early and having to regroup at halftime and find a way to out physical a team like Duke or reorganize the offense. So you're not rushing shots and you are being more aggressive at the rim. And this team, lo and behold, they did it. They found a way. Great teams regroup and they find ways to win. They've done it nine games in a row and they're going to the final four because of it. Absolutely you, remarkable. I want you to think about this for a second. How many points do we have at halftime, Grayson? We had 21. And we finished with 76? 55 point second half. Not bad. I mean, I mean, we how have we seen that from this team this year? When they when they were called offensively, when they were playing the type of defense that's gonna hold you to 64, we weren't always seeing this this type of offensive production. And you know what a what a time! And and as a lot of people are pointing out, our men's and women's basketball team scored exactly seventy six points today, albeit albeit in very different ways. Both teams overcame deficits in the second half as Correct. well. Correct. Two teams of destiny. Two teams. And I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Both of our teams are allegedly going up against unbeatable buzz saws in the next round. Hmm. Ain't that interesting? Ain't that so interesting that both of these teams are going up against one seed that, oh, yeah, you, you can't, oh, man, you, you know, you can't do anything with Zach Eady. He's, he's the guy. He's, oh, man, you can't do anything with Cardoso and company. I'm telling you what, we weren't supposed to be able to do anything with McNeely and company in the pack line defense. We weren't supposed to be able to do anything with Flip and company in the first time. We weren't supposed to be able to do anything with uh, with, with the, the Dirty Foot Club because, you know, they – 
they've got players of the year over there, and their big's been in college for 45 years. You know, he's been in college since the last time NC State won, but he's got all the records for rebounding the ACC. Oh, you know, we, we weren't supposed to be able to do anything with Texas Tech, not off the mighty Big 12. Oh, no. Right. Mm-mm. No, sir. Oh, we can't do nothing with Oakland. You know, they. I, I said, Ken, you said they were undeceited, so that got to be a team that's, that's going to put the beats on. Okay, well, we it was all fun and games, but now we got Marquette. Now we got a real team with a real coach who, who turned down your job because it just it wasn't that good. And lo and behold, oh, well, you caught Duke off guard the first time. They wasn't ready. Na- hmm. Hmm. You know, it, it's don't wait. Don't wait for the other foot to drop because it's not dropping. This is who these teams are. They're showing up. They're dominating. On the women's side, oh, yeah, Vander, Vanderveer and Brink, you know, best shot blocker in the nation, and, and y'all love to play inside. It's going to be real tough on them. Oh, you know, NC State last year, first-round exit against Princeton. Uh, that's not a team that, that's doing anything special. Oh, you know, Westmore can't get over the Elite Eight. He's just – he's forever going to be the bridesmaid, never the bride. I'm telling you. This is this is this is what it's about. And this is what it needs to stay about. And and Grayson, I'm gonna tell you this. Don't feel bad for being emotional. I mean this to all of Wolfpack Nation. <laughs> don't feel bad for being emotional about this thing. I don't care if we win 10 of them in the next team. I don't care what happens. Feel good when your team is winning. Believe that your team is gonna win. Believe that your team is gonna show up and do great things every time. Because I'll tell you what, these two teams, I never, when I watched that women's game, never saw a doubt. Never saw a doubt in their eyes when they got down. Everybody said, well, Texas is just as deep as y'all, and they're longer. They're taller. They're one C for a reason. I never saw that team crawl up into a shell and say, oh, they're throwing more punches than we can take. Did they get staggered? Yep. But they got up off the mat. They got up off the mat, and they said, hey, we're going to work what we work. We're going to do what we do. And lo and behold, that's where they are. You know what I mean? So is this the greatest day in NC State sports history? I would argue it's it's up there. I would argue you can't give this one lower than two, maybe three, because this one here, man, it's, it's tough. It's tough to say that there's been a time better than this. And, again, with all that Wolfpack fans have been through, with all that Wolfpack Nation has been through, let out every tear. Drink every drink, of course, responsibly. Hug all the people. Have all the fun. Do all the things. Of course, stay safe and legal now. Don't don't end up in jail. The judge ain't going to be there until at least Monday morning. So don't you play around. You can't watch the don't. final four from the clink. Exactly. Don't, don't play around. Don't play around. But enjoy this because this is something to be enjoyed. You know how many teams never, ever, ever see their men and women go to the final four at the same damn time? And you're alive for it. Go enjoy it. Go enjoy it. This, and we we talked about this the other night, we don't know when we will see something like this again. You you truly don't know. This this is such an unprecedented time to be involved with NC State as there ever has been. Greatest day in NC State history, maybe you give the ACC title game number one. Obviously, you win the title. That was an improbable run. I think this is a rock-solid, solidified number two. Yeah. You're advancing to the final four, men's and women's, on the same day. Off two upsets. Off of two two upsets. upsets. And the men's team is on this 83-esque run right now. They feel like a team of destiny. They're they're still marching. We're still doing this thing. I -hmm. think it is an unquestionable number two, and it still has room to be number one. Of course, we'll cross that bridge when we get there, but – what a time to be an NC State Wolfpack fan. What a time to be an NC State athlete. What a time to be an NC State student, alumni, parent, faculty, anything. This is we okay, all right. I'm I'm going to I'm going to fight through this. We are such a proud we are such a proud fan base. And yeah. I got emotional when we won the ACC championship. That is and it still is a super big deal to this fan base. Absolutely. Two weeks later, we're still doing this and we're reaching even higher heights. That That is so like, that is so incomprehensible to a lot of us right now, myself included. But 
you if if you weren't alive for 74 or 83, I've seen this all over social media here the last couple of weeks. You are witnessing the greatest time of NC State basketball in your life, in your entire life. Life in in my life in Kenton's life, we're both 28 years old. We have never seen something like this. We might never see something like this again. This is these this run, this type of thing, it doesn't happen. It does not happen. There's the only there's only one team, and it's the 83 team that has really done what we're on pace to do. You could talk about UConn Kemba Walker, kind of similar, but not exactly the same here. This yeah. doesn't happen. And so it this is so unbelievable to watch and try and comprehend. And NC State, like, we deserve this. Yeah. We deserve this. We've been, we've been the people call it the redheaded stepchild in the triangle for 37 years. We've watched all their success. We've watched teams around the country experience success. Talked about we we were the only P5 school to not win a championship of any sort in football, basketball, or baseball in what was it 30, 32 years? Mm-hmm. 32. Basketball mm-hmm. just won the ACC title. Got rid of that. We got that off our back. NC State stuff, asterisk, you know what the stuff means. That is dead. That's yeah. long gone. None of this happens if that was still alive and well. Whether you believe in it or you don't believe in it, there was very real elements to everything that we've watched in the last 32 years. We have never seen something like this. We don't know how to feel. I'm I'm surprised I'm even able to speak to you all right now. I cried before I got on here, so I'm surprised I'm able to keep it somewhat together now. You know, I find it funny when Kevin Keith said, I think we've stuffed the stuff a few years ago. Everybody was so upset. We yeah. were so mad at them and all that good stuff. But you know what I learned a long time ago? Nothing can happen until it is first what? A dream. A dream. And that's and that's the honest, honest, honest to God truth. That's the honest to God truth. It took it. Listen, say what you will for all of the, the things that Kevin Keats went through after saying he stuffed the stuff. It took him calling this shot. All the other coaches, they avoid talking about it all together because it's like you know. Coach Dorn has hinted at it a little. Yeah. But Kevin Geats grabbed that thing by yeah. the horns and said, yeah. We stuffed the stuff. Although we can all agree it was not stuffed in, yeah. it is in fact, it is in fact stuffed now. It, it is in fact, yeah. it is dead. The stake has been driven through the heart. It is gone. Because if it worked, we wouldn't have an ACC championship banner to hang. We would not have elite eight banners to hang for men and women this year. We would not have final four banners at minimum to hang for men and women this year. And damn it, I want the whole damn thing. I want the whole Angelata. I want the whole thing. Get greedy. Get greedy. Final four ain't enough. I want to be the final one. I want to be the one standing on top of that hill saying, my last game of the season was a win. Can you say that? Hmm? <laughs> Yeah, the uh, stuff to stuff call back then, it it was premature, but I'm so happy that Kevin Keats was the one to actually stuff the stuff. Kevin Keats killed NC State stuff. He did. He was the one to do it. His introductory press conference, he told us all Kevin Keats was a winner. We bought into that. First season, he beats Duke, he beats Carolina, he goes to the dance. Mm-hmm. NC State fans are like, he ain't lying. He ain't and lying. And we bought into it really hard, right? Had to go through the, the dark cloud that was the end of the Godfrey tenure. Of course, we all know about that. Made it out of that storm now. You go through the worst basketball season in NC State history yeah. in 21, 22. You survive that. You, you come out on the other side of the tunnel. Baby T takes us to the dance last year. Still comes up short. First round exit. Reconstructs this roster. And there was so much anticipation in doing so. And this was like the first real look at what a transfer portal era team 
looks like. By now, many of you have probably seen the graphic floating around social media. NC State is the only team in this Elite Eight where every single starter came from a different school than NC State. Each school had like one or two guys, maybe, that started at that particular school. NC State completely revamped. Kevin Keats went in the portal. He identified that talent. He brought it here to Raleigh, and we're going to the Final Four. Throughout this season, while a bit disappointing, the highs and the lows, there was a lot of criticism about the roster. I was critical of the roster. Many people were critical of the roster. At the time, it was true, but they always had this in them. They just had to make a couple changes. I, I'm, I'm losing my words here. A couple, uh, I'll forget that. A couple adjustments, buying yeah. into your role, believing in yourself, believing in each other. This is what they were always capable of doing. When this team formulated this last offseason, we had aspirations. I don't know if they were this high per se, but we knew that the team that was assembled was potentially able to pull off extraordinary things. Yeah. What we have witnessed, this nine-game win streak, is the most extraordinary thing I think we could have possibly imagined, and it's not done yet. And and I want you to take a second and think about something. In terms of how improbable this is, we talk about the men's team because of all the things that happened, you know, in terms of, of this season. Let's take a second and, and talk about the women for just a second to, to close this thing out here. Their leading score from last year was who? Was it Diamond Johnson? Who's no longer with us. Right. Leading rebounder from last year was who? Is either Hobby or JBT. Sanaya Rivers. Oh, still here. Sanaya Rivers, who is still here. But let's think about how insane that is. A wing was your leading rebounder in the ACC, where the bigs dominated, where our last, what, six, five, six players of the year, all bigs. Kitley, 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 Kunane, Kunane. That's that's the, the conference we were playing in with Sanaya Rivers as our leading rebounder. Our leaders in so many different areas, our leaders in terms of who are our most vocal leaders from last year, our leaders in terms of the players who set the pace last year, our leaders in terms of the person you roll the ball out to and say, hey, we need a bucket from last year, gone. Off a team that finished eighth in the conference last year. All of that going from a team that finished eighth in the conference last year. And yet, they come out this season, and Grayson and I were texting about it earlier this year. I believe it was when they were playing Colorado. I said, is this serious? Yeah. Are they back? I believe that was the origin of the uh, Westmore standing on business meme. Are they back? It was, It actually was. Yeah. And that, the Connecticut game was. I mean, I'm sorry, the Colorado game was. And so you look at this, and you say, like, how – how special this is for both teams. Because again, we've seen the women dominate throughout the year. So we act like it's normal. It's not normal to do this when you're no. losing so many big pieces. No, it's not normal to do this with Grayson. Just out of curiosity, how many seniors do we have that played all their years at NC state on that women's team? You talked about all the transfers on the men's team, but last time I checked, uh, we don't have a single senior. That played their entire – nobody walked on senior night in terms right. of players who played meaningful minutes that played all four years here at State. You had Baldwin, who started Florida State, Collins, who started out at Tennessee or Maryland, one of the two. I know she played at both. You and, and you had Madison Hayes, who started off at um, Mississippi State, but she she's not a senior. And, and here we are for both of these teams. Man, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. The, the statistical probability that two teams figured to be middle of the pack or worse in their conference, both from the same school, end up in the final four together? Grayson, you're right. I don't think we'll ever see anything like this again. I don't think – and if you can predict when it happens and what school it is, go ahead and play that Powerball. I know somebody just hit the billion on the Mega Million. Go ahead and play that Powerball because you got the gift of clairvoyance, my friend. What a time. What a no, time. Nothing's off the table. Absolutely nothing is off the table. Both of these teams can handle any single thing 
that stands in their way right now. Yep. Team, we, we're talking about team of destiny, team, plural, teams the teams. of destiny. Yep. That is what NC State can proudly stand behind right now. We've talked a lot about being in the spotlight right now. NC State is undoubtedly in the spotlight. Now, Duke's women's team also lost. We are the, well, yeah, I guess that wouldn't matter because we also just beat the men's team. Hello. Yeah. We're the only team sending men's and women's to the final four. In terms of the power five, absolutely. Absolutely. Don't let anyone ever forget about this. And yeah. I, I have full confidence that NC State fans will not. We will no. never forget. We will never stop talking about this run. And I, I'm i holding on for dear life right now. My tear ducts are screaming at me. I, I will talk about this run for the rest of my life. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. I will never, for, I will never forget what I'm watching right now. I will never forget this feeling of the 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 outpouring of Wolfpack pride, the videos of everyone at the bell tower, the tweets of people saying, I've lived in Charlotte all my life. I've lived in Greensboro all my life. I've never seen this much red all at one time out in public. I was at Easter lunch today with my family and I had this quarter zip when I sat down. The waitress maybe maybe didn't even know what was going on today? But she says, "Oh, yeah. NC State, they're still playing, right? In that in that tournament, are you excited?" I almost cried. I was like, yeah. "Ma'am, you have no idea." Yeah. How, pu- pull up a chair. How much time you got? All NC State fans feel like that. We have wanted this forever so badly. We have wanted something like this forever. You watch the smaller schools like Shaka Smart and VCU comes to mind when they make a run to the Final Four. Even back then, you're like, man, it'd be so cool to see yeah, NC State have a moment. Be nice. Loyola of Chicago, man, it'd be so cool to see NC State have a moment like this. Could you imagine? You talk to your friends. You know, I uh, obviously I played club baseball at State. We have multiple group chats so many times over the years. Man, it'd be so cool to see NC State football in the CFP or NC State basketball in the Final Four. It just happened. NC State basketball is going to the final four. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh it's 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 tough to even conceptualize, you know, the amount of futility, the amount of almost, the amount of we were close, the amount of we we're right there, but but this ball just breaks the wrong way. We get a bad call from the refs. And let's be honest. In terms of the Texas and, and NC State game earlier in the day, yeah, you know, for that that one for the most part, I wouldn't say Texas got a ton of breaks that that just you could tell, like, oh man, they're remembering they're the one seed. It was a few calls, but not that many. In this Duke game, you could tell at points. It was like eight on five, and they just kept kept battling, kept battling to say, hey, whatever happens, we're not gonna let it stop us. We're not gonna let it, you know, deter anything. We're not gonna let it. I'm telling you right now, this type of energy, it permeates and it spreads. It permeates and it spreads. You want to know how I know it permeates and it spreads? Grayson, did our baseball team have to make a comeback as well today to complete the sweep? Uh, Yesterday when they swept Notre Dame, yes. Ninth inning, walk-off home run from Garrett Pennington. Comeback effort. Okay. And is that the first uh, walk-off on a comeback, a ridiculous comeback that we've seen this year from them? That's the fifth walk-off of the year. Hmm. And um, for the football team, is this not one of the first times that everybody is seriously predicting, like, hey, we're going to end up in Charlotte? We're going. The highest expectations we're of going. my lifetime. I'm telling you, that why not us mentality, it permeates and it spreads. Now, listen, we're going to get y'all out of here because we want y'all down at the bell yeah. tower. We want y'all down at the pub. We want you to celebrate this with your family friend. And trust me, Locked on Wolfpack, we are a family. Right, y'all are our family just as much as anybody else. But we want y'all to go celebrate with your people. Go celebrate with your people again. Do so responsibly. Do so responsibly. But go celebrate with the people. Because don't stay down here too long and and listen to me blubber about all of this. Uh, Our our guy Fred Stewart had a comment. I need to bring this up because this is what we'll close with. 
hug your loved ones. The uh, the picture that circulated on social media after we had beaten Marquette of uh, the, the three guys holding each other yep. after that win. Do that. Do that with your friends. Do that with your family. Do that with anyone in your Wolfpack family you have ever experienced any of the the hardship, the struggle, the frustration, and now this joy. Pour into that. We, oh, I'm sorry, y'all. We have waited forever, forever to do this. Treat it like that. Don't don't take this for a don't take this for granted for a single second. Hug your family. Tell them we did it. Go to the bell tower. Buy as many shirts as you can possibly afford. I'm gonna break my bank buying Final Four shirts. We at I'll announce this now as a podcast. We might be putting out our own merch soon. This needs to be celebrated for decades. We plan on celebrating this run for decades, this team for decades, our coach, Kevin Keats, for decades. We're going to treat them the way that they need to be treated. They are they're the saviors of NC State Athletics. They did it. They brought us back. NC State is back. We're relevant. We're, we feel on top of the world right now. But something else here, there's more work to be done. Yeah, not done Job yet. Not Job not finished. Two more games, men and women's. And I'll tell you something else, they can do it. Absolutely. Zach Eady, Purdue, let's dance, big fella. Let's see what Absolutely. you got. We can take them. The women's, if they got to run into UConn, if they got to run into South Carolina, they can beat South Carolina already, is next. They already beat UConn this yeah. year. So you know they can do it. Yeah. South Carolina is next. They absolutely are. So, you know, it, it's – I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Neither of these teams have looked scared or flinched one time yet. And they're not going to. They're not going to. And neither should we as Wolfpack fans. We shouldn't if either one of these teams sees a deficit next game, which obviously we will hope not. We will hope for wire-to-wire domination. But anybody to tell you winning the championship is easy, I got a few rings of my own. You know, one of my biggest regrets in life was not winning one with the pack, but that's all right. And I'm telling you, it's not easy. It's not. So these two teams don't give up on them. Don't give up on them because they ain't giving up. They ain't giving up. And Coach Keats has specifically said multiple times, including after this game, there's a direct quote from Kevin Keats. It's amazing what these guys are doing and playing for this university. Uh, do you do y'all understand what that language means? He didn't say they're playing for each other. It's amazing what they can do when they're playing for themselves. It's amazing what they can do when they play for the names on the back of their jerseys, their family. It's amazing what they can do when they're playing for this university. That includes Grayson, who was an alum. That includes me, who was a letter. That includes somebody said dropouts earlier in the chat. Yes, that includes dropouts. Everyone. That includes. That includes fans who never who never took a single class at state. That includes the people who uh, who have done nothing but you know clean up after folks. It includes every if you are if you feel like you're part of Wolfpack Nation, because I see some folks in the comments that are here not to celebrate we us, but to celebrate Duke losing. We, we see, see you. We peeped it. We peeped it. But if you're if you are a part of Wolfpack Nation, this is your win. This is your moment. And Coach Keith has said as much. Enjoy it. We're going to get out of here because you have, you, the listeners, all of you, have to go out there and celebrate this thing. Thank you all so much for joining us this evening. Be sure to hit that like button. (coughs) Sorry. Drop your comments in the comment box. Hit that subscribe button and hug somebody. Hug somebody. Understand what just happened. Realize what we just watched. There's four teams in the men's tournament and the women's tournament left. Eight teams all total. NC State has two of them. Grasp that. Embrace that. Understand what's going on right here. Celebrate this as hard as you can possibly celebrate it. We have earned this. 
all of us, all of us, alumni, players, current students, like I said, faculty, all of us, do it. We love y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. I should also mention, this is also our Monday episode. We went long. This is a 45-minute job here. This is Monday's episode as well. I'll be posting this on Twitter for anyone that misses us. We will see you all next on Tuesday. Certainly much more to talk about. If I can keep myself under control, we'll talk more about the finer details of this game, what it means moving forward, whole lot of something, whole lot of nothing, all of that. We'll get into it throughout the course of this week. We got more basketball to play. We're playing next weekend. Both teams are in the final four. I can't believe it. Y'all better go celebrate it. Thank you. We'll see you. We'll see you on Tuesday. Go pack. Go pack.